The Rumpus in the Garden by Sven Nordquist Voice by Wolf Krebs It was a beautiful spring morning. The birds were singing in every bush, leaves and blades of grass were sprouting, and everywhere small creatures were flying and crawling and working, so that all the air was filled with slight, whirring, rustling, singing sound of all the living things which had woken to life after the winter. Old Man Patson was standing in the vegetable patch, looking at and feeling the soil. Now it's the right time, he said. Today we can saw vegetables and set potatoes. Findus the cat ran around scaring beetles. What do you mean, set? he said. Set in the ground. If we put carrot seeds down in the earth, then carrots will grow there. And from each potato we set. There will be five to ten new potatoes. The cat looked at the old man with a determined expression on his face. Uh, but I don't like five to ten new potatoes or carrots either. Uh, can't we set meatballs instead? You can always set them, of course. But they don't grow, said Petson. Surely one can try, said Findus. Yes, you can have a go. But, but first of all, we have to dig and rick. Findus ring, ran off and fetched one of the meatballs left over from the previous day. Petson dug up the vegetable patch and leveled out the soil. He sawed the seeds in straight, neat rows, carrots and onion, peas and beans. The cat planted his meatball. Now and again, he ran back to see if it had grown. Just when there was only one row left to saw, a shrill crackling could be heard from the direction of the house. Come, 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 he's digging, he's digging. And in a flash, all the hens darted out to the patch and began to scratch around the in the earth after the worms. Oh no, Patson moaned. I've forgotten to shut the hens in. You can't be here, you ruin everything. You are scratching up the seeds. But the hens didn't care about what the old man said. They knew of nothing better than worms. And where digging is going on, it's easy to find worms. As soon as Petson had shooed away one hand, another turned up instead and scratched about so that the newly sown seeds flew around just anyhow. Findus bravely tried to defend his meatball, but even though he shouted so much that he started coughing, the hens nevertheless pecked his tail and all of a sudden one of them had scratched up the meatball and gobbled it up in a trice. Do I have to lock you in simply because you can't leave the vegetable patch alone? Petson scolded. Come along and you can have a few sunflower seeds instead. It's worms we want, said the hens. In that case, I'll dig up a patch just for you where you can pick for worms, Petson said. Come along with me. Petson went into the chicken run and dug a furrow. The hen stayed outside the wire fence. There isn't a single worm left. Duck, 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 duck. We have taken every one of them, duck, 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 said Prillen, who was head hen. It was she who ruled the roost. On the contrary, said Petson, there are lots of worms here. Come in and you can see for yourself. If we go in there, then you will shut us in so we can't get come home out again, said Prillen. Oh, oh no, you know, I don't think, he said somewhat hesitantly. 
Just then, Findus yelled with all his might, The fox is coming! And in a single crackling flutter, all the hens were inside the fence. Petson hurried out and closed the gate. Ha 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 ha! You fell for that one! Findus laughed. That's what you get for eating up my meatball! You cheated us, Petson! The hens shrieked. You locked us, cuck, cuck, cuck. you locked us in when you said you wouldn't. Cuck, cuck. <clears throat> but you see, you ruin everything otherwise, said Petson. I shall open it up again in a few days' time. If I see any worms, I'll save them for you. Petson went back to the garden, and the cat ran ahead. They gazed at the devastation. Confounded hens! grunted the old man. The whole job was quite needless. We'll have to do everything all over again. And my meatball has gone to waste too, said Findus. It's eaten up. It's no more. Petson saw new rows of vegetables, and Findus had to plant a new meatball. For safety's sake, he built a sturdy fence around it. After that, it was the turn of the potato plot. The old man dug furrows, and the cat put the potatoes in. It was heavy work for the old man. When he was done, his back was thoroughly exhausted. Yes, that's it, Petson wheezed. What a relief that that's done. Now, all we have to do is water and wait. You can do the watering. I do the waiting, said Findus. Early next morning, Findus went to see if the meatball had grown. It hadn't. On the contrary, it had disappeared. Just a gaping hole and someone had trodden in the neat, newly sown rows of vegetables. But things looked even worse in the potato plot. Everything was topsy-turvy, and everywhere there were holes where no potatoes were to be found. Findus ran in. Petson, wake up! My meatball has gone, and every hole is without potato! Uh, what are you saying, cat? Is every hole without potato? Petson hastened out of his bed with the cat ahead of him. What on earth is the meaning of this? said Petson when he saw the potato plot. Who has done this? The hens are locked in. What? The hens are definitely not locked in. Do you hear me? How did you get out? Three terrified hens peered out from behind a tree. When Petson laid eyes on them, they rushed straight back to the chicken run with the old man in pursuit. When he opened the door to the hen house, all the hens were inside. May we come out now? Cuck, 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 one of them said. Come out? You've already been out, that's for certain, and caused a havoc all over the potato plot. How have you got out of here? We haven't done anything. Cuck, cuck, cuck. We've been here all night. Cuck, cuck, cuck. We've been asleep. I have laid eggs. Me too. We haven't spoiled anything, the hens crackled. Oh no, that's obvious. Pets and scolded, of course, it's Gustafsson who has been here and scratched up the potatoes. Petson, Petson, Findus interrupted and jumped up on his old man's shoulder and tipped on his head with half a potato. It's not them. Look, someone's been eating the potatoes. Hens don't eat potatoes. No, no, said all the hens. Cuck, cuck, cuck. We don't eat potatoes. Cuck, 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 cuck. Of course you do, Petson said, bewildered. But not like this, 
said Findus. Look, a big bite, and there are tracks in the ground, not the tracks of hens, tracks not like hens. Tracks not like hens, snorted the old man. That I would like to see. He want to see the tracks, cuck, 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 not like hens, too, cuck, 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 the hens cucked. And in a long row rushed out through the doorway and over the potato plot. Patson was the last to arrive there. Findus stood in the middle of the flock of hens and carefully examined the track and compared it with his own feet. There, you see, cut, 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 Petson said Prillen. It's not cut, 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 us, cut, 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 it's a cow. No, cut, 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 a goat, said another. An egg, cut, 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 a frog baby, cut, 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 a Gustafsson, cut, cut, cut. No, I know what it is, said Petson in a determined tone. It is a oink, 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 could be heard from the meadow. Oink, oink, oink. It was a pig. There's Gustafsson with a pig. Sure enough, the neighbor Gustafsson appeared there, pulling a pig by a robe. She is big loose during the night, Gustafson called out. I found her in Anderson's potato field. She likes rooting up potatoes. Yes, we know that, said Petson. She was here first and ate her fill. Gustafson came up and had a look. Oh, that was a shame, he muttered. You shall have a new lot of potatoes. It's all right, said Petson. But I've gone and scolded my hands quite needlessly. So they can just as well scratch around here today when the plot is ruined anyway. Then I said potatoes again this evening when they've gone to roost. Did you hear that? Scratch away now, but only in the potato plot. Not a single scratch more in the vegetable patch. Promise. Yes, yes, cut, 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 we promise, cut, cut, cut. All the hens shouted and set off straight away on a warm hunt amongst the clods of earth. Petson erected a few poles and fencing between the vegetable patch and the potato plot so that the hens wouldn't forget. Findus helped by shooing away the hands who didn't know what promise meant. He thoroughly enjoyed being a watchman. Towards the evening, most of the hens went into the hen house as usually, but some were still there in the plot scratching around. It's time to go to bed now, Petson called out. There aren't any more worms. I'm going to set potatoes now, and I don't wish to see them being scratched up all over again. After that, it will be under lock and key for you for three weeks, Findus said emphatically. No, no, be quiet now, Petson hissed. Uh, but it was too late. The hens went mad and ran in all directions, squawking and shrieking. They are going to go and lock us up, cut, 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 in the hen house again, cut, cut, cut. He's going to trick us again, cut, 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 cut. What a rogue old man is. Windows, the old man waved. Now you messed up things. What did you say that for? I simply haven't said a single word, the cat said, offended. The hens sat hidden under the bushes and argued about how horrible Petson was. We don't want to be locked in, gak, gak, gak. we'll stay here all night, gak, gak, Prillen explained. But suppose the fox comes and takes you, said Petson. It's teeming with foxes outside the yard, Findus shouted. You can trick us again, gak, 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 said Prillen. There won't be any foxes coming, gak, 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 gak. 
It is no use nagging, Patson said quietly to Finnis. We, we'll set the potatoes now and hope for the best anyway. So Petson set the potatoes for the second time around. Finders planted his third meatball and built an even stronger fence around it. Never again would anyone be able to dig it up. When they were done, it was almost dark. The hens gleamed white where they stood under the bushes, watching and waiting. I'm going to bed now. Stay out if you dare, Petson said. But no more squitch scratching. Promise me that. Perhaps, cuck, cuck, said Prillin. Maybe we'll promise, cuck, cuck, that, cuck, cuck. Petson went in with the cat ahead of him, and he looked concerned. In actual fact, Findus, I am a bit worried about the fox coming, he said, and tucked on his ear thoughtfully. I was thinking... Wouldn't you think it could be very exciting to keep watch tonight, you who can see so well in the dark? And when it gets light, you can wake me up. Would you like to do that? The cat stared wider. Am I a little cat to chase foxes away alone in the middle of the night? No, no, just keep watch. You can sit in your cabin in the tree, and you can take with you a milk pail with some stones in it, and a torch. If the fox shirt should turn up, then you can rattle the milk pail and shine the torch so that he'll be frightened. And then I'll wake up and come out. Would you dare to do that? Yes, of course I would. If I sit in the cabin and have a milk pail and have a torch. Petson helped Finder settle down in his cabin. There wasn't any risk that a fox could make it his way into Finder's, but Finder's himself, however, had a good view of the whole garden. The milk pail rattled very well, and for safety's sake, they stretched a string from the cabin and in through Petson's open bedroom window. Later he would tie the end around his big toe. If Findus pulled on the string, the old man was quite sure of waking up. What a piece of luck that you are so brave, Findus, Petson said. Yes, of course I'm brave, said Findus. Cats are brave animals. Yes, indeed they are, said Petson. It will be light again soon. You can wake me up then. Good night, and don't sleep tight. When Petson was about to go around the corner, Findus called out, Are you certain foxes can climb trees? Yes, definitely. But if you are afraid, then come on in with me now. Not at all. I just wondered in general. Good night, old man. Petson went into bed. He wasn't so worried about Findus. He always came out well. He was more worried about the hens. But on the other hand, oh, it was long ago since the fox had been in the neighborhood. It would indeed be exceptionally bad luck if one turned up on this particular night, said Petson. Findus sat alone and kept lookout. He saw the five hens who had dug in and half buried themselves under a bush. It wasn't particularly dark for him, since he was a cat. There wouldn't be any fox coming, that was for certain. And if, against all odds, one should turn up, then Findus would simply rattle the milk pail, shine the torch, jerk on the string. Rattle, shine, jerk, rattle, shine, jerk. But nothing was going to happen. That was for sure. He would just sit there and keep watch. And then Petson would take over. No fox is going to come. Not a chance. It'll be light soon. How quiet it is. 
quiet and still. No sign of any fox yet. The stars and the bright sky look down, where he, Findus, watched his flock by night, while seated, keeping watch over his five hens. Findus woke up with a start. There was a crackling. Wasn't it dark anymore? Is it the middle of the day? He looked out. Hey, hey, rattle, rattle, shine, shine, jerk, jerk. Petson, wake up, wake up. They're trampling all over my meatball. Petson almost flew out through the window. What's the matter? Is it a fox? Oh, oh no, no, not now again. The old man was out in a trice, armed with a broom. The entire garden was full of cows, at least six of them. Cows were trampling around in the potato plot and in the vegetable patch and in the flower beds and in the raspberry bushes. What are you doing here? Petson yelled. Be off with you. You're ruining my entire garden, you know. They are trampling our worms. Gak, 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 to death, the hens shrieked. Get rid of them. Gak, gak, gak. But the cows didn't understand sufficiently why the little old man was making, making such a fuss, since they just stood where they were and looked. Leave my flowers alone, this is my garden, and now you are leaving there the same way where you came in, Petson cackled, and began to chase around in order to drive the cows out, and the hens and the cat lent a helping hand. But to drive six cows away isn't the easiest of tasks. After a quarter of an hour they were still there and the flower beds and the potato plots were even more trampled than before. This won't do, Pets and Pendon. I must fetch some help. Anyway, uh, they are Anderson's cows. You know, uh, he'll have to help. Stupid cows! You're stupid and prying! That's what you are! You don't understand anything! The cat screamed. Exactly. Stupid and prying, the old man grumbled and started off. But then an idea came into his head, so that he came to stand still abruptly. If they are stupid and prying, Perhaps we can coax them out. I think I know how. The cows stood absolutely still and stared wide-eyed when the old man and the cat and the hens went into the kitchen. Soon afterwards, they followed in order to see what had become of them. Petson and the hens came out and looked pleased. Now, ladies and cows, Petson said solemnly, after this white dance, allow me to present the wandering bag. The hens applauded and the cows goggled. A paper bag skipped down the kitchen steps. It wandered off into the garden and came to a standstill. All the cows stared. They had never seen anything like that before. And now it tinkled too, like a cow bell. The hands ran up to the bag. What can it be for a thing? It's the strangest. They cackled and looked as Cain at the cows. Altogether aroused by the curiosity, the cows scampered towards the bag. But when they were almost up to the bag, it ran away across the lawn and waited there. The cows came to halt. They had to stand still in order to grasp what was happening until they heard the tinkling from the bell again, when they started off again all the more eager. But when they had almost reached the bag, 
It ran up the slope overlooking the garden and stopped again. It jumped a little bit and tinkled. And the cows followed all the way with Patson at the rear until they were back in the meadow where they belonged. Afterwards, Petson put up the fence again. Findus flung off the bag and ran back to the old man. The cows goggled at them and looked as if they didn't understand one jot. And in fact, they didn't. Surely no more accidents can occur now, Petson said. I'm going in to have a sleep now. Tomorrow I'll go round to the neighborhoods and tell them to repair their fences. Then we must try to get the garden back in order again. I think it'll be sufficient if we just grow my meatball. We can have it in a pot instead, said Findus. Surely such an amount of vegetables can't be good for you.